Hi everyone, my name is Kim and I am Barbara's daughter. Welcome to my floss tube. This is episode number 41 and it is Monday, June 19th. I didn't have a chance to film a floss tube over the weekend, so I am doing it today. I have the day off from work, so I figured I would get all my things together and show you what I've been doing. So thanks for joining me today. Um, a little bit of housekeeping from last video. Um, Brenda H. had asked about a quilt on my quilt rack back here, and I'm not sure which one. Let me see if I can move. There's a couple of them over there, so I'm not sure which one she mentioned, but um, the one quilt I made, it's pictures of uh, my sister and I, and so I had given that to her when I got married. Uh, she was my maid of honor, so that was a quilt that I made and gave to her um, at like our rehearsal dinner, I think. And the other quilt is a quilt my mom made. I'm actually going to insert a picture here because you can't really see the whole thing on the quilt rack. Anyway, um, she made that quilt when I was pregnant with my first uh, child, my son, Sam, and um, she gave that to me at my baby shower. So um, they are both... Uh, very important and beautiful quilts to me. So uh, thank you for noticing them, Brenda. I don't know what the name of the quilt pattern is for the one my mom made. If I can, um, if she knows and I can get that, then I will put that at the bottom of the screen. But if you don't see it there, that means she didn't know either. <laughs> um, so I don't have any uh, cross stitch finishes this week, but I have a couple finishes of a different kind. So I finished the blanket that I was crocheting for my friend's grandson. And I'll insert pictures here of what that looks like. I already gave it to her, so I can't show it to you in real life, but here are some pictures. And um, I also was able to finish a couple of the project bags I've been working on. So they're more like a project like folder. This is what it looks like here with the magnetic clasp and a patchwork front. And then the back is vinyl and has a Velcro pocket. Now, um, I will link the pattern that I used below. Um, however, there are a couple things that I definitely want to mention about this pattern that I didn't realize going into it. And, you know, that is my fault <laughs> that I didn't realize it. Um, these pockets are great for your small patterns, but they're not going to fit an eight and a half by 11, even the inside pocket is not gonna fit that large of a, a pattern because this isn't necessarily meant for cross stitch projects. It's just uh, for sewing projects in general. Oops. So I have two more pockets on the uh, right hand. I think it's right hand, <laughs> I'm backwards on the right hand side here. And these, this is split into two pockets. So you can put scissors or thread, needles, whatever you want there. And I did the same thing down here, only I split it into three pockets down there. Then in the middle, there is a vinyl project bag. And so here, my zipper is facing down and this zipper is facing up. And I would have rather had the zipper up on here, which I could have done if I had, you know, thought about it. But I followed the directions exactly in the, in the pattern and I didn't like think about what that was going to look like when it was done. So I don't, if I make another one, I will definitely try and get my zippers going in the right direction, but I have a small vinyl pocket here. And then this is the biggest one, but still it's not big enough to hold like your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper without folding it. So this is definitely a nice project bag for bringing small projects somewhere. Um, and I like it. I love the fabric and everything. But um, I think I also would say um, the project, the pattern rather, uh, it says it's for an advanced beginner. I do think that an advanced beginner or even beginner sewer, sewer, seamstress, could uh, do this project bag, but the directions are not adequate for a beginner seamstress. Uh, there are not things listed like what direction you should iron your uh, seams. Um, the, the names of different pattern pieces are different when you cut them than they are in the pattern. So I could figure it out, but I've been sewing since I was a kid. So I, it took me a while. Every time I was looking for a pattern piece, I was looking for vinyl binding because that's what she had called it when we cut it out. But then she's now calling it vinyl bias tape. 
And it's the same thing, but it just takes a minute to like figure that out. So there were some things I think in the pattern that made it a little more difficult to complete the project. Here's another one that I did. So this is more patriotic fabrics. And again, with my zippers going in different directions and sorry, and my um, pockets on the inside on the back. So I like the way they came out. I have um, four more that I haven't finished yet, but I got these two done. So I wanted to show them to you. And um, I have another sewing project that I'm really interested in doing because I have some time in the next couple weeks that I'm not working. And this is um, the Sewing Space Station, which is kind of a funny and cool name. Um, and you can see it's used uh, in this picture to put your sewing machine on. But I thought this would be a great use for like a mat at a retreat table or even at home to put out um, when you're stitching. In the top, there are pockets and you can see she put stuff there. Um, the whole thing folds up and there's like a little extra bag that goes with it. And this part that hangs is good to like, you can hang that off your table or the couch or whatever and put like your scissors and things in it. So it's obviously not made for cross stitching, but I'm gonna make it for cross stitching. This is another look at what it looks like. So these are pockets, big long pockets here, and these flaps cover them. And then there's two more pockets over here. And then there's like a, the thing that hangs down with more pockets and a little pouch that attaches down here. So I haven't even bought my fabric yet for this, but I am gonna go this week and get that and get started. Um, this is by, um, <laughs> Arab Arabesque, I think is the name of her company. I don't know the woman's name who designed it, um, but I will link the pattern below. And um, if you're interested in taking a look at it, she is doing a sew along for this. It just started this week, I think today. So um, it definitely looks um, like she has really thorough directions, like the package of directions, which are around here somewhere. Ah, one second. So when I printed out the directions, it's like this thick. <laughs> so, but I mean, she has really specific directions. It's a beautiful PDF. She's got pictures along the way. I would much rather have thorough directions than be missing steps. So I'm gonna give that a try sometime soon and see, uh, see how that goes. So those are my finishes uh, for the week and I'll get into uh, my whips next. Okay, so now it's time for my whips and I have four of them uh, today to show you. So the first one is Open Your Heart and I'm gonna put a picture here of that uh, because it's on my um, Kindle in Pattern Keeper. This is a project I'm doing for someone that I think might actually be watching my floss stream now. So we're not gonna talk about who I'm doing it for or why I'm doing it for them. But um, I do think I have more time now than I realized I did. I was trying to rush and get this done. And now I think I have some more time that I can um, kind of step back and go a little slower and work on some other projects in between. So let me actually just grab my board and I will hold this up for you to see. Okay, so I've made a lot of progress since my last video. I even got some greens in there. <laughs> I was getting a little tired of all that pink. It's beautiful, but it was a lot of pink. So I have done a lot of this in here, just filling in and I started part of the word here that's adventure. Um, or adventures. And so again, I don't have to rush to get this done anymore, but I am happy to be making some progress. I feel like I'm using Pattern Keeper for, for this, like I said, and I feel like it says I'm about 30% done with that. So we're getting there. So that is Open Your Heart. And the next project that I have is the Floral Motif Sampler. And it looks like this. I have been, um, I think I only worked like two or three days on this. I finished the big flower here. I put the year in, so I gotta finish this this year. I did a bunch of flowers down here and I started the basket for this guy up here. Um, but I, uh, I had some trouble because, so the initials, uh, Tanya, Tanya, I think her name, Tanya, I think it's Tanya, Brockmeyer. I hope I'm saying that right. She's the designer for Scarlet 
house and she has her initials there, but there are no initials, like there's no alphabet. So you have to figure out how to do the initials that you want, which is fine. But I figured I would go look through some of my other Scarlet House patterns that I know do have alphabets and that way I can come up with something that looks good there. So you'll see, whoops, let me clip the end of this here. Oh geez. <laughs> We'll get the hang of it here. There we go. Okay, so this is what I have done so far. And like I said, I finished this big uh, flower, put the date in, did a bunch of little flowers, and then started the basket up there. So mostly down at the bottom I work. This is kind of the halfway point right here. So we're getting there. I really enjoy stitching on it. It's nice to have like little finishes and things. So I'm enjoying stitching this. Again, I only worked on it for probably two days, maybe three over the past couple weeks. Um, and so I think if I give it a, a few more days each, each time I do a video, then hopefully I'll get this done over the summer. Um, we'll see. I have a little bit more time in the summer to stitch, so I'm looking forward to that. The next project I have is the Scarlet House Isabella Jackson 1829, and I'm doing something a little different than this. As I was stitching, I first thought that I would eliminate the words here that are over one, not really because they're over one, but just because um, I didn't necessarily like the verse or anything. It says, when conscience pleads, turn not away, tis heaven that speaks and points the way. I mean, it's fine, but it didn't really do anything for me. So I thought, well, let me get rid of that and maybe move everything up a little bit. That seemed to work because I could just get rid of one of these motifs from either side of the border and that would work. But as I was stitching, I realized that the rest of the things down here, like the name, the people, the dogs. Eh. I don't really like stitching people in my samplers. I do it if they're there and it's fine, but it's not something that I like look for. So I thought, I think I'm actually going to cut out a lot of this sampler and I'm going to end it right underneath the row of flowers that I've been working on. So where I want to end it is actually, instead of putting this white line there, I've moved this border up right underneath that row of flowers. So I have done just the um, outline of the border. So you can see there's my row of flowers and there's the border there that I put in. And so um, it's gonna be pretty much eight and a half by 11, actually 11 by eight and a half when it's done. So hopefully that won't be too hard to find a frame for. And um, I am doing this on Picture This Plus Ale, 36 count. I now have a whole half on the other side, half of my fat corner that I can use for something else. And I actually know what I wanna use it for. So that's good. I'm using the Called For Silks, which are Bell, uh, Classic Color Works Belle Soie Silks. And I really like using them. Um, but I actually am super excited to get this done. I'm hoping because all I have to really do is the border and then um, I will probably put not that white line. There's not enough room for that line, but there is a tiny little line. It's very hard to see down there <laughs> under the words. And I am going to put that in, I think, because after I finish the border, there'll be just a little too much space between the flowers and the border. I don't want to leave it looking too empty. So um, hopefully by the next time I have a video, I will have finished that and um, you can see what I meant to do with that. So that is Isabella Jackson. Okay, the last um, thing I was working on this week, past two weeks, is Star Spangled Ornaments. And um, I actually misspoke earlier when I said I had no other finishes because I did finish some of these. And I don't remember which ones I have already shown you and which ones I haven't. So I'm gonna show you all the ones I've finished so far. This I know I've shown you, that's the first one I've done. So that's a kite. And then I did this one over the past couple weeks, I know. This is the apple or blueberry pie, which I think is super cute. 
And I have finished this heart. These are on Lori Holt's Oatmeal 25 count fabric. And if you're going to do this, you do not need two packages of that fabric. You can get them all 12 out, out of one. And I think I have a very generous uh, allowance on the outside. So um, I don't think you need to give it quite as much. Um, I think they measure them nine inches when Fat Quarter Shop when they do, are doing it and you don't really need it to be nine inches. So those are the ones I finished. And then I decided I needed something to stitch like fill in. I'm going to be doing this Zoom workshop for four days next week. And I think I can get a lot of stitching done while I'm participating in this Zoom call because it's a lot of just taking it in, listening. So as long as I don't have to read a chart or at least a very complicated chart, I think I could, um, get a lot of fill in done. So what I decided to do was to do like the designs, but not the red, white, and blue background. And then I will fill in the red, white, and blue backgrounds when I am sitting on the Zoom call. So I did this flag, it says USA, and that one is um, going to have a blue background. So I'll just fill the circle in around that one. And I did this hat, which has, I think, a white background. These are really quick to do. I mean, in one night, you can definitely get one done. This has a blue background as well, this popsicle. And then I am still working on this little <laughs> cupcake. It's almost done. It has a white background. So I'll be filling in all of those. And then I have three more that I haven't started yet. So there's a one that says July 4th, there's a firecracker, and there's this one here, which is like a star, July 4th, and the firecracker I still have to do. So um, I'm actually hoping that by the next time I do a video, I'm done with those as well. And then I'm going to spend some time fully finishing those. So that'll be um, hopefully interesting and fun to finish them in the um, tins that they are finished in on the, um, on the pattern. Okay, so let's see what's next. Those are all the projects I worked on this past week. I am going to show you some haul that I got. Um, my birthday was in the beginning of June and I got a couple gifts and I got a, a couple stitchy gifts and a gift card to 123 Stitch. So I am gonna show you what uh, came in the mail for that. But um, I did get this book, which I think Brenda and Laura showed on their last floss tube. It's called Charting Your ne Needlework Legacy. My mom got me this. The front part is like a journal. It asks you questions. Um, like what is your biggest stitching accomplishment? How, um, how did you meet your stitchy friends? What would be the three things you would love to get as stitching gifts? And you just answer the questions. And then about halfway through, there are, um, places where you can put information about your stitching. So, um, you can put a picture, you can put the, um, information about the, stitching and then you can also say who you would like to give this needlework to after you are no longer here and i know we all wonder about what's going to happen to our cross stitch when we are no longer here so that allows you to kind of set it aside for someone in particular if you have a special piece to go to someone or perhaps to like a certain organization or whatever so i got that and then um, I bought this myself at Hobby Lobby. It's just a 25 count blue. I got into, this is Lugana, but I really enjoyed stitching on 25 count, um, the Lori Holt fabric. So I thought this is a nice color. I actually get mostly like beige fabric, sometimes gray. I wanna start getting some fabrics that are in different colors, particularly blue. I really like blue, so. Um, some patterns that I bought from 123 Stitch. The first one is one I'm also hoping to set up so I can fill in while I'm on my Zoom call, that big house and roof, I think would be really good if I got that um, kind of marked out the outline, did all the windows, I could just fill in the white, fill in the gray roof. So I am going to stitch this on a piece of XG Designs fabric. I don't know what color it is. 
and I have, I think I have the called for, no, I don't have called for colors. These are just colors for my stash. Um, so I'm going to be using those to do the strawberry house by Scarlet House. Scarlet House seems to be my favorite designer lately. And then the rest of the patterns I haven't kitted up yet, but I will try and take them out of the plastic bags so you can see them. I have looked at different people doing this for a long time. Uh, the New Hampshire Stitcher, I think she just finished this and it's beautiful. Um, so I really want to stitch this. It is called My Home in the Garden and it's from Hello by Liz Matthews. And I'm really uh, looking forward to starting this. I, I would like to get that started. I bought uh, Candy Claws. A lot of people have been getting this. Uh, Helen D did this on fabric and made a stand up, which is what I intend to do. And so this is a kit with perforated paper, but I won't use the paper. So um, that I think my, I might bring that on vacation with me if I can find a good color to do the, um, she had a nice light blue, which is where I'm thinking I need to get some colors in fabric. Um, so if I can find the right color, then I will maybe take that on vacation with me and work on that. This is Bent Creek Each Day Row. It says each day provides its own gifts. And then I had done earlier, um, I guess in the springtime, right after market, I had done Annie B's Folk Arts Blue Pairs and Blue Work or Blue Pairs, I don't know. This is Red Work Pairs, so these are the other ones. And I don't know if I'll do them in red or if I'll do them in blue, because I used a dinky dye silk for the blue ones and I might want to have six that are blue instead of three blue, three red. I'm not sure. I like them in red, but we'll see. I'm, I haven't decided how I'm going to approach that. The last pattern I got was Rejoice Evermore by Blackbird Designs. I would love to start that soon because it's so pretty and it's not huge. I mean, you can see it's a square, the stitch count, let's see. 251 by 248, it's big, but it's not huge. So all the things I wanna stitch. I have 31 projects already kitted in project bags with fabric and floss that I haven't started. That is in addition to my 20 some whips that are going on. So clearly I don't need any of these patterns and I don't need to start any of these patterns right now, but as we all know, purchasing cross-stitch is a different hobby than actually completing cross-stitch. So um, I actually am gonna film a video and uh, it's going to have all of my kitted projects to show you. And I'm gonna save that for when I'm on vacation so I can have that loaded and ready to go out because I probably won't do a regular floss tube when I'm on vacation, uh, which is um, in July. So I'm gonna get all my kitted projects together so I can show you and um, you can see that I really don't need to be buying patterns, but here I am buying them anyway. The last thing I got from my boys was the Ryobi glue gun. Now, if you know, uh, Ryobi, I didn't, I didn't pull it out from my husband's tools, but they have a battery pack that attaches to all their drills, to a lot of their tools, and it attaches to this glue gun too. So it's a wireless glue gun. My husband leaves his batteries plugged in over there, so all I have to do is go grab a battery, stick it on here, and glue my little, glue to my heart's content here. So it is Ryobi, you can get it, um, at Home Depot, although he said he had to order it, actually. He ordered it from Amazon because they didn't have it in stock in Home Depot, but Lowe's, Home Depot, the, those any kind of um, home improvement store will have Ryobi tools. And I have not tried this yet, but I am excited to try it. I have a lot of things to finish. And actually that's another video I was thinking of doing is showing all the things I've finished. So if I have time before I go on vacation, I'll film that too and hold that back and play that uh, post that while I'm away so you can see all my finishes that are not fully finished. Um, let me just check my notes here and make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, I did want to mention a couple of floss tubers. I just mentioned the New Hampshire stitcher um, earlier when I was talking about the Liz Matthews pattern. I really enjoy her videos. She's relatively new. And the other person that I started watching right when I started watching her was Cross Stitch Kate. And I like watching her videos too. They both do once a month videos. So usually it's like the same day their videos come out and I can watch them both. 
um, or at least the same weekend. So um, I enjoy watching those two. And the other person that I have been watching a lot lately, kind of like all her backlist videos, is the Steadfast Stitcher. And um, so I will link all three of those below. Please check them out and, um, you know, give them a follow and see what they have been stitching. So I do have, um, I think, time uh, for one more video in two weeks before I then go on vacation a week after that. So you'll see me here again in two weeks for a regular floss tube video. Hopefully I will have finished the Star Spangled Ornaments, at least finished, maybe not fully finished. And also the Isabella Jackson modified version that I'm doing. Those are my main plans for the next couple weeks. And uh, I will be back and show you my progress on that and, and whatever else I've decided to stitch. So until then, happy stitching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.